Hello, my name is Greg Crinklaw, and I'm the developer of Sky Tools. In this video, we're going to look at the new mode that has been added to the real-time imaging tool. I'm going to select the real-time imaging tool here. In the, the last video, we looked at the first mode. Um, it, at the time, it only had one mode, and the way that worked was that you created a bunch of imaging projects and then you used the scheduler tab to create a schedule for a specific night and then on that night you opened the real-time imaging tab and then observed that pre-made schedule at the telescope. In this new mode you skip the schedule part and go right into observing one project at a time. So it's a sort of a freeform um, schedule as you go mode and um, it works in a very similar way a lot of the things are the same it's just so you you schedule one project at a time okay so the first thing you want to do is you want to connect your telescope telescope connected uh, at this point, we're going to assume that we've done all the preliminary things we need to do. Um, we have aligned the mount, we've focused, um, we've maybe done calibrations. And I want to turn your attention to the top up here. This is the night bar, it's the same night bar that's throughout the program. Remind you that the shaded area is the darkness of the sky throughout the night and that the teal line is the altitude of the moon and the gold line is the altitude of the sun. I'm going to select a project here. These are projects that are waiting to be observed very much like on the scheduler tab except we're going to schedule them in real time. I selected the Sombrero Galaxy. It was at the top of the list and this list has been sorted to put the best objects to observe right now at the top and it takes a lot of things into account um, one of the things it takes into account is the priority and I'm going to click on M3 here I'm going to right click on the priority set that to very high and notice how it jumped to the top okay put that back to normal if the priorities are the same it looks at other things like uh, how important is it to get this object tonight is it setting and in a month it's going to be hard to get that would make it a high priority or if you're observing it at 3 in the morning right now and next month is going to be fine that would make it a lower priority there's things like that that it looks at it also looks at the specific night and things like the filters if you're doing a project that is observing um, in narrowband filters then um, so moonlight might be fine and depending on the altitude of the moon, how far away it is, its phase, and so forth, that might apply to other filters too. And since SkyTools uses a model, it can figure all of that stuff out. So what we're going to do is we're still going to use the scheduler, but we're going to schedule one object at a time. And I'm just going to go with the one it thinks is best right now, which is the top one, the Sombrero Galaxy. And I'm going to click Schedule. So now we've scheduled the Sombrero Galaxy project. And these are all the observations that SkyTools has decided are good to make tonight, right now. And going back to the night bar, this vertical yellow line is now. And I've magically made now several days ago on May 18th before the moon interfered too much. And so we've gone back in time to May 18th. It's um, just before 11 p.m. And... I want to talk about what's below the night bar here. These colored lines are very important to understand what they are. This first line here, directly below the night bar, is the line that tells us for the selected object what the best time of the night to observe is. And remember that when we have an object selected, the red line here is the altitude of that object, so it's highest in here. Um, and the blue line is the most important line on the night bar. That line is the relative exposure quality. So you want to expose when that line is very high. 
and you'll see that it more or less coincide, coincides with when the object is highest in the sky. Um, but it also takes into account things like moonlight, but it's going to depend on how much moonlight. And in this case, there isn't significant moonlight at this location in the sky to really affect it that much, at least in the red filter, which it's chosen one filter as sort of a representative filter. So what we've got here is it has taken this red, I'm sorry, the blue line here, and split it into blocks. It's graded it. When it's really high, above 90%, that's the bright green, okay? And when it starts to get lower, above 80%, 80 to 90%, that's the dark green. Lower still in here, that's uh, um, a 70 to 80% graded as a C, and then less than that, and less than that. Now, generally, you only want to observe when you're in the green areas. It's best to observe in the bright green area. Okay? So that's what this does. It breaks down the night. It's giving you the same information that is in this blue line here, but it's splitting it into blocks of time, so you can see it very easily. So what it's basically saying is you want to observe from this time to that time. And right here, this is the current time, so we're right in the middle of that big block. Now below that, down here, this is the schedule line. And in this, this mode, we schedule one object at a time, one project at a time. And so this red here is the slew, right here. It's uh, saying it's going to take 3.8 minutes. I guess it's a slow mount. The first observation is this dark green. Second observation is the next green. Third observation. Fourth observation is this little one here. And that's the fifth observation. Now, if you leave it sitting like this, it's going to update once a minute so that these times are current. And so this whole block here is going to slowly move to the right. And eventually, one of these filters is no longer going to be in the green area. Now I say the green area, the bright green area, because that's the the classified as A quality. And over here, if you look at the Sombrero Galaxy, we have defined that project so that it only gets observed when there's A quality. So if we were later in the night over here in the B quality zone, it's not going to observe it. And you're going to get it marked with an X, and it's going to show up down at the bottom of the list. But if we waited here long enough, it would slowly move over and reach that point. And when one of the filters does go out of, of range, of quality, then it will go ahead and reschedule your object here. So you might see this completely change as the night goes on. But in general, you want to just schedule it and observe it. And I neglected to mention that up at the top up here, we have the mode selections. This is project mode, and this is pre-scheduled mode. Pre-scheduled mode is what we looked at before, um, where we use the scheduler to create a big, long schedule here, and then we use the real-time tool here to schedule it. In this case, we're observing one project at a time, and it's more free form. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. We've connected to the telescope. We've got everything all set up. I'm going to, we've chosen a project. I'm going to click the Start Imaging button telescope slew into target. Notice the first thing it does is start the slew and um, it didn't Telescope slew complete. It didn't slew automatically. It slewed when I pressed the button. Um, but you do need to be aware of the fact that sometimes when you press buttons it's going to initiate a slew. So it's telling us here that the telescope is now at the Sombrero Galaxy. That it's tracking at the sidereal rate. Uh, the first observation is the blue filter. We're going to expose for seven minutes at one time binning and a position angle of 299 degrees. So, because this camera has a rotator on it. So at this point, I would bring up my camera control software and I would put all this information in, seven minute exposure, one time binning, and I would start the exposure just like we did in the previous mode. And when I've started the exposure, I click Click when exposure started. Started. And that tells Sky's tool, Sky Tools that I've started the first exposure. Because if you look here, 
we're going to we're going to do two seven minute exposures so this is an exposures set or um, for for one filter so we wait and it exposes and exposes and exposes seven minutes later we're not going to wait all seven minutes the exposure stops it uh, reads out the image and then I click and then I go and I start a second exposure just like the last one seven minutes and when it started I click here again started and now it started the second exposure we wait for the exposure to complete we wait for it to read out and then I click log image set and this brings up the dialog where I log the image most of the information is already here you can optionally go and read the fits header to get more information um, from the image you just created uh, but generally it takes all the information you need right from what we're doing so I could just click OK and it would log the observation and then later on you'd be able to look at that log and see that you actually did it what the temperature conditions were those the temperature and other weather conditions are taken from here by the way and the quality is taken from there so if I set this to excellent this would have shown up excellent I'm going to go ahead and click cancel here because we're not really observing so now it's moved on to the next filter it's moved on to the green filter the sombrero galaxy and you go through the same process and then it'll move on to the V filter and then the luminance and then the red and eventually it will be done and when it's done this will close but I'm gonna go ahead and click stop and that brings us back to where we were before now if we had actually observed the sombrero galaxy and we completed it then it would have disappeared from the list okay because it means we're done and 62p here this comet would be the next object up I'm gonna schedule that here's the schedule for 62p it's just this short little observation here and I click start imaging telescope slewing to target telescope slews and we follow the same process telescope slew complete now if you're using a gem mount then after the slew is completed it checks to see if we need to flip to the other side of the pier if your telescope automatically flipped that's fine um, but it may be that we're going to be exposing for a long time and during that exposure time it's going to need to flip if that's the case it's going to recommend that you go ahead and flip and it will automatically flip the telescope okay so it checks just before we start each uh, each exposure all right in this case we put in the luminance filter 30 seconds one times binning and we set the camera position angle to 90 now if I had set this this um, let me see if there's another one here if I had set that we'll go to pan stars here let's schedule that there it is click start imaging telescope slewing to target it's gonna slew to it now for pan stars pretty sure is if, if I remember correctly slew complete. I set it up to track the target so once it's at the target it will um, that's interesting started <laughs> not sure what happened there I'll have to fix that before I send this out um, so once we're at the target it's gives us the tracking rates and it automatically sets the tracking of the mount if it's capable of doing that to follow the comet so up here instead of saying tracking target it says tracking sidereal but uh, other than that it's going to work the same way when you're done with this project it will turn off the tracking and go back to sidereal so this is the basic way this works um, you can follow along on charts there's uh, information you can get by right clicking here's a report tells you blooming magnitudes um, how far it moves during the exposure things like that very useful things 
you can open up the exposure calculator from here object info um, and when we stop it we can have we have similar possibilities over here you can open up the exposure calculator open it in the atlas um, etc okay so that is the new mode we're calling it right now observed by project I may be may go with a name like uh, freestyle or or um, real-time scheduling or something like that I haven't quite settled on a name so these are the two modes um, let me know if you've tried it please I'm not getting a lot of feedback in terms of people actually trying these things at the telescope I was waiting to introduce this new mode until I got um, feedback on the old one but I, I got a lot of bug reports that were sort of related to the whole process but nobody actually said hey I connected it at my telescope and I used it so I don't know if they used it and it was fine or maybe nobody actually used it so please report back to me that you have used this tool which mode you used and whether or not you had any problems how it worked for you um, if you saw anything strange that you thought shouldn't be the way it works let me know and I will look at it All right thanks for watching